Just mind your lines. Just mind your lines. That's all you've got to do. Who's going to cart shed? They're battling their bodies. <laughs> don't break. Don't break. No, no, no. The demands of modern traffic. Oh, I'm not going to kill him. And people who think they're a menace on the road. Should they be driving at 100? No. I don't feel old. Why should I feel old? Just don't tell them to hand in their car keys. I don't want to lose my driving license. I've cut you out of my will, did I tell you? Meet Britain's oldest drivers. I'm 102 years old and I like driving. I don't see why I shouldn't be driving. All people are living longer now. Maybe because they're better fed. As Britain's population ages, so does its drivers. Have you got your seatbelt on, Mary? No, not yet. A hundred-year-old Mary Walker is off to her weekly bowls match. You know, it's, um, it's a funny life when you get old. A hundred-year-old Harry Cutts is going down to the betting shop. When I was younger, I used to take chances. You know, if I thought there was just room to get to, I'd go. I'm better driving than I am walking. Oh, yes. Car Thompson, at 102 years old, could be Britain's oldest driver. He's off to pick up his groceries. The secrets of my long life are wine, women and whiskey. <laughs> Going over the top here, these are the old people's houses. Old people's houses are no good to me. I'm not old. In Britain, there are more than 200 drivers over a century old. Many of them hit the road before driving tests existed. A triumph of longevity, but not everyone is celebrating. Older drivers do make me nervous, and driving at the age of 80 or 90, no way should they be on the road. And 100, definitely not. They could have a heart attack, a stroke, uh, anything could happen whilst at the wheel and cause a serious accident. I think it's a bit stupid, really. No, I can't even joke about it, it's just wrong. You can, you can't, you, at the age of 100, it's just... Why? I'm George Kenneth Medlock, known as Ken Medlock, and I was born 14th of September, 1914. You were... You were... Born on the 10th of September. I said 10th of September. You didn't. You said the 14th. Did I? Ken and Edna Medlock met 83 years ago when the first highway code had advice on how to use your horsewhip in traffic. I'm not talking about Ken's bread. Ken? Are we ready? Yeah. Oh, there's no question who's the boss. Ken. Edna. <laughs> <laughs> Edna doesn't drive anymore, but Ken does. Like many young men, he learned to drive in the company car while working as a mechanical engineer. I didn't get my own car until 1946. 46, and they were very difficult to come by after the war. I waited some time for it. Ken's progressed from his Ford Poplar to a BMW. Well, I think we'll go for a ride, Edna. Very good. And now drives just for pleasure. I have to put the pressure on Edna to come out because she's very conscious of the fact that the wheelchair is an inconvenience. Yes, I don't like to be a nuisance. I'd rather stay at home. In Britain, there is no law requiring you to retake your test, whatever your age. So Ken's free to carry on driving for as long as he wants. OK, I got a seatbelt on. Today, he's taking Edna on a date to the seaside. Riding along in my automobile My baby beside me at the wheel Nothing, Nothing coming. coming, Edna. Edna's very attentive when I'm driving until she gets tired and then Drops she'll off nod off. Put your indicator out. You're a very good driver, Ken. Thank you ever so much, dear. You aren't just looking. 
right down that road, you're looking left and right. You're seeing what's happening on the right-hand side, what's on the left-hand side. Just keep my eyes on what's happening here now before I do any talking. At 99, Ken's aiming to join a very exclusive club with just 209 members, and he's got just a few months to go. I'm going to, I hope, be able to say what it's like to drive at 100. I'd like to think I'm going to be able to say what it's like driving at 102. People who don't know me right, think I'm being very, uh, uh, what shall I say? Uh, Precocious. Yes, I think that's a good word. Who I can't say it. I'm going after this one. Come on, you have to be quick. If there are only 200, 100 year olds still on the road, there are tens of thousands of 90 somethings. This is what I do every morning, certain exercises, arms around there. In South Wales, 93 year old Basil Smith has his own way of staying young. And the back of the hands are touching the floor and up. There's the knees up 20 times, high kicks 20 times, pulling my toes back. Cycle fast 50 times. And the next exercise is a bit embarrassing. <laughs> They'd be queuing up asking me to show them how to do it. <laughs> and of course, there's the dot on the ceiling I work out. The dots are on the, the highest point on the wallpaper. Back and forth, back and forth is my own exclusive exercise. And I bought a patent for it. Former British rail worker Basil likes to stay in shape because he still plays tennis twice a week. My car key. I don't know where the hell they are. Oh, they're here. Look, they're on the floor here. Look. Damn it. Sorry. Basil's got no desire to slow down. In fact, he's just bought a brand new car. I'm very pleased with it. And I like to keep it clean and tidy, so I, I check it over every weekend. Very keen on driving, yeah. Got plenty of confidence, you know. Doing? <laughs> Made a faux pas here. Yeah. I feel 21. Basil started driving seven years before the first motorway was built. The Preston Bypass in 1958. The M1 followed a year later, but it wasn't until 1965, following a series of multiple crashes, that a 70 mile per hour speed limit was finally introduced. I'll go up to 80. I really like to feel the car going, going like hell, you know. <laughs> What's the speed limit? 70. You better come back to 70 in case. Along with other over 70s, Basil has to reapply for his driving license every three years. But with no test to take, he must simply self certify that he's still fit to drive. But I think everybody should have a driving test, I think, after, after 75 years of age. Because modern uh, traffic now is. It's much faster, and they should, well, they should have an eye test. Definitely a good eye test. Have you had an eye test? No. Oh, I did when I, when I had the, uh, glasses. How long ago was that? Oh, about 20 years ago, I think. So this week, at the age of 93, Basil plans to be assessed by an experienced driving instructor to decide whether it's time to hand in the keys. If the driving instructor failed me and said I wasn't good enough and I'd have to pack in driving, it would be a shock. It would hit me for six, I'm afraid. And giving up driving would deprive Basil of one of his life's joys, his beloved tennis. Morning, Basil. Yeah, morning. And the only just... man amongst uh, the ladies. No, just the I've way you like a, it, Basil. I've, I've got a choice this morning, then. <laughs> you take, take it easy on them, uh, though, right? Well, I'll give you a handshake from the heart. <laughs> that, that's a handshake from the heart, you know? Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
With no need to hand in your license, it often comes down to relatives to decide if it's time to give up the car. In Solihull, 68-year-old John Cutts has arrived to inspect his dad's driving. I thought we could go out for a little drive for 10 minutes. You know, who, who's going to do the driving? I'd like you to drive me. Me? Yeah, be good. Yeah, too yeah. safe? Very, yeah. <laughs> So that'd okay. be good. So a hundred-year-old bomber command veteran, Harry, has been on the road for eighty-six years. Get me back. Yep. Okay. I think the, the children of, of, of parents with aging drivers do have a responsibility to check everything's going well. Oh dear. I'm happy for him to, to continue driving as long as he's honest about it and feels able to. How are you feeling about your driving these days? I, I love driving. It's Good. It's much better than walking, I'll tell you. Well, you are a you are a hundred, Dad. You drive pretty well, don't you? Uh, no problem, yeah, John. No. At the moment. No. I think what you have to do sometimes is just the what? What you have to do sometimes is make sure you're in the right position on the road, and then you have to indicate a little bit more, of course. You have to remember your indicators sometimes, Dad. Yeah, but well, that's all. When I don't indicate, but, but it's you, when I'm in. They ought to know when, when I'm in the traffic. Yeah. Harry started driving when he was just 14 years old. As compulsory assessments didn't come into force until 1935, he's never taken a driving test. I'm not dangerous now. I used to be. I've ridden up three cars, you see. This is the Daimler Jag I had, and I hit another car head on and finished up in Water Hospital with a fractured spine. That didn't put Harry off, and 50 years later, he still drives nearly every day. Well, you did very well there. That car came from the right with that new layout. You had right away, but you stopped for him. That was good. It was good. Very good. Yes. When I get to the stage when I'm not ready for other people's actions, then I, you know, I don't want to drive like an old, I'm not an old man. Watch the curb, watch the curb here, Dad. What? The curb. Oh, I'm going the curb. Okay. Keep on the, yeah, just mind your lanes, <laughs> just mind your lanes, that's all you've got to do. Oh, dear. Your father will not like it if one day he's told he can't drive, but it will be for the right reasons, and I know he will accept it. What a life. That's good, Dad. I can report back to my brother that you've done very, very <laughs> well. Oh, dear. I have got the license for 2016, but I don't think I've got the license for myself for 2016. I think I should be gone before then. OK. Well, I'm glad that's over. Harry's son may be happy, but not everyone is willing to leave their parent with the keys. We'll meet Mrs. Collinson and daughter Gail. You do understand that it has taken your li my, my liberty away. And it's judgment time for Basil as he meets his driving instructor. Oh, you should know the second yes. exit. Yes, yes, sorry. You'd be classed as an old driver, 50 or puts. 50, I think 50 is still a bit young because they've still got a little bit of life left in them. Older drivers, they can be really dangerous. I mean, I've seen a couple of cases where they've actually stopped at green lights and gone through red lights. Well, I got hit side on and the woman was about 90 and she just turned around and said, oh, I didn't see her, darling. Now, I drive an 18-foot car and she didn't see me. What if that was a kid? When it comes to older drivers, some relatives are taking matters into their own hands. I mean, it, it was cruel, and I know it was, but we just said, Mum, we're taking your keys. Gail Fulton has a tricky appointment. She recently stopped her 102-year-old mother, Sheila, from driving against her wishes. But she won't accept it because she still feels that she's capable. Well, she says, I've been doing this for 100 years, she says, and uh, you can't argue with that. Mrs. Collinson, as Sheila likes to be known, is a great-grandmother of 18. She's been driving for 79 years, but she's not happy about her new life as a passenger. Of 
cut you out of my will, did I tell you? <laughs> oh, have you? Gail's taking her mother on a drive to try to convince her the time has come to stop. Are you ready to accept my decision, our decision, that you stop driving? Well, I can't do anything else. <laughs> I haven't got a car unless somebody's going to come and give me a new car. Perhaps I could get a boyfriend <laughs> who had a car. But you understand that we felt that the time had come? No, I don't understand the time had come. Finish. I don't think it was necessary. I mean, I do understand that it has taken your... Lib my, my liberty away. Yes. Yeah. That's what I find so awful. Gail and her siblings didn't want to wait until their mother had an accident. You know, people say, oh, of course, she takes the test over eight. I said, they don't. Nobody does anything. I said, it's up to the family to, to take this responsibility and actually make, you know, take the decision. The final straw for Gail came when Mrs. Collinson struggled to get into a right-hand turning lane on the way to Gail's house. So th this is the dual carriageway where you had trouble pulling out. The cars come like that and you can't get from one lane to the other. So I went along to get out and I couldn't get out and I had to go on. If you are a competent driver, you put your indicator out and you just move out. And, and you can't when the cars are like this. Well, you can actually. Mrs. Collinson ended up getting lost for more than two hours. And my poor daughter was ringing up all over the place and she even ran up the police, I think, to know where I was. So that's why I was stopped driving. But it was really, I was quite safe. I was doing it because I was being careful. She finally found her way back home, but for the children, enough was enough. Well, all the decisions were made out of love and out of respect for you. And the fact that you could walk away, head held high, that you'd given up driving and you hadn't had an accident. Hmm? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not talking on this. You're fed up. You're, You're fed still up. fed up with me. With an aging population and 29 million other cars to get in their way, more and more people are faced with a decision. When is the right time to stop? When it's too old to drive, I don't know. I just don't know. It would deprive me of one of my life pleasures. If I couldn't drive, it would be very difficult. I should have to accept it, wouldn't I? There's nothing else you could do about it. I think I would feel irked. But no doubt, like everything else, you learn to adapt to the new conditions. If you, if you don't adapt, you're a dinosaur and you die. The UK's first electric traffic lights were installed in Piccadilly Circus in 1926. By then, Basil Smith was already five years old. Now 93, he's gearing up for his driving assessment. Never carry a quarrel into next day. <laughs> Thought gets you nowhere. Action gets you somewhere. Very well said. And you know, two in a bed is interesting. Three in a bed is very interesting. Oh, I haven't got my blooming what's the name on? <laughs> Basil's assessment will be his first official driving lesson, despite being on the road for more than 60 years. When I had this accident, uh, well, not uh, I, well, it. What the hell is he doing? That car there, right behind me, going from one lane to the other. Trips to the tennis court aren't the main reason Basil needs the car. Last year, his wife Glenis had a stroke and now lives at a residential home 12 miles away. I don't want to lose my driving license. There's a censure for me driving because the place where we live, I've got to have a car. It gets lonely in the bungalow in the evenings. I'm there on my own, you know, and no, no one to talk to and all that. But I look on the bright side and it doesn't get me down very long. Oh, Glenn. There we right. are. No need for a oh, man. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Everything then, you all right? 
Yes, I'm very good, good thank you. Today. I brought some uh, grapes today for you. Oh, dear and Maltesers. Oh. And the Don't newspaper. Don't say Maltesers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey? Look at me, Glenn. Yes, you know, you've got, such a, you've got such a handsome husband, you know, Glenn Barton, <laughs> and you. Hey? Oh, dear, you hey? said it. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about me having this assessment driving test then? Do you, think I'll, good do you think I'll pass it? I think you will. I think you will. Yeah. Oh, there you are then. Oh, You've got plenty that's of bi- confidence. That's, that's built up my confidence now. I know I'll be sailing through 100%. Oh. Unless <laughs> I do something looking silly, you know, knowing me, Glenn. It would be very awkward if uh, you couldn't drive now. Yeah, I know that. Because uh, there aren't many buses going around this area. No, no, that's I yeah. hope you'll be able to drive very way to come and see me yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, and look look forward to the future, eh, Glenbach? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel a little bit sad to driving back here on my own, but there you are. That's part of life. Home sweet home. Have a little black and white bungalow. I can do things ready for for breakfast tomorrow morning. With the big day looming tomorrow, Basil's leaving nothing to chance. Looking forward to the driving assessment. The sooner I sit it, the sooner it'll be over. And then I'll know whether I'm a good driver or not. Yeah. That's ready for the morning now. Of course, the trusty motor doesn't simply get you from A to B, it gives you independence. The freedom to go where you want, when you want. This is the cemetery. My wife is buried in the cemetery there. A 102-year-old Searson Thompson lives in Aberdovey, Wales, with the nearest shops five miles up the coast. He took to the road 88 years ago, performing stunts on motorbikes. Now in his faithful Citroen, Searson still has the freedom to look after himself. I drive because I fetch my own food. I drive because I'm on my own. I drive because I'm completely self-sufficient. If I were to stop driving now, I'd, I'd become a vegetarian. I'd, I'd veget, veget in, in my own home and I wouldn't be able to get out. I'm just closing my door now because I'm finished shopping. I'm going back home now. With a combined age of 197, Ken and Edna use their car to keep the romance alive. It was that uh, couple there remind you of our courting days? No. No. She, she's no memory of those. Dim. She isn't a very romantic person, really, you know. All the romance in the marriage I think I'm about to provide. <laughs> Today, Ken's brought Edna on a date to the seaside. I've what? never had a Valentine card in all my life. After 98 years. She's done very well to weather the storm, hasn't she? Never having had a Valentine card. It uh, must well, be a great strain. <laughs> I love you, dear. Oh, yeah. I love you, dear. <laughs> Yes, it's easy to turn his lips away from me, <laughs> still. <laughs> We're not regarding ourselves as, oh, well, we've had our life and now let's shut ourselves up and, uh, and, and just wait for the end. We're just carrying on as though we were 60 and we've stood a long time in front of us. Oh, yes, I think you'll still be driving when you're 100. <laughs> I hope so, anyway. Yes, I do, too. Ken and Edna married in 1939 and had three sons. They're now coming up to their 75th wedding anniversary. Edna, do you remember how we got together? Yes, she kept coming to our house and wouldn't leave me alone. (laughs) Well, I married you because you were nice looking. (laughs) That's the first time I've ever heard her say I was nice looking. (laughs) She was the most difficult uh, person to catch. If I'd been on my own, say, or Edna been in her own, 
I'm sure I wouldn't have lived as long. No, uh, I can't imagine life without Ken. I always say I shall go first. Because I think Ken will always be here. He's, he's stronger than me. Coming up, they may be old, but that doesn't mean they won't break the rules. They can't get you for speeding on the bend, can they? How close do you think you should be to the car in front? I think I should be much closer. And they're taking to the road in vehicles of all shapes and sizes. It's a very, very hairy stop. I know that, I know that. In your 90s, the legs start to creak and crumble. But just because you can't walk doesn't mean you can't drive. I've got my coat here, which is handy because uh, on my feet, I'm, as, you, as you know, I'm not very mobile. 92-year-old Val Biro lives in West Sussex. I've got bad knees, uh, which should have been replaced by artificial knees but I'm afraid I chickened out of that operation. I'm a visibly disabled man on my feet, not, not in the car. My bottom in first. Val's car is rather special. A 1926 Austin 12 known as Gumdrop. Ignition on. came to the UK from Hungary in 1939 to study art and decided to stay after the war. Since then, he's written and illustrated more than 30 children's books on the adventures of his beloved car. Mr. Josiah Oldcastle has an old car called Gundrop. People teased him about his car. They said it was positively prehistoric, like a dinosaur. Today, Gumdrop is off for lunch, along with Val and some friends. That's it. Uh, Which is older, the person or the car? Uh, the person. Yes, acceleration is not your strong suit in this car, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I've really done that. <laughs> Everyone on board. All that Gumdrop needs to do now is get out of this cul-de-sac. Best of luck, Turning circles, they tight on these cars. Back in Gumdrop's day, cars didn't have some of the modern conveniences you'd expect today. They needed a little nurturing to get started. Cars were very crude. In the first car, you had to go out and wind it up, hadn't you, to start it, and this kind of thing. Before, 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 that's it. There were no indicators until about the late 20s. If you wanted to turn right, you have to put your arm out. You could just watch this in again. Yes, keep coming around. Our cheapest petrol was 9p a gallon. The highway codes changed significantly since Britain's oldest drivers first hit the roads. In 1931, mirrors weren't mentioned, and drivers were advised to sound their horn when overtaking. There was no such thing as a roundabout. You took your chances when you came to a crossroad. I think probably some people were very chancy. I think I can just got me to come in. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I was a member of the RAC. And you were passing, they could pick up the RAC bud and they salute you. That's it. Yeah. Well done. Well done, Gumdrop. Yeah. With a car that doesn't go much above 30, Val's content to let the modern world fly by. For Mr. Josiah Oldcastle, Gumdrop was the best car in the world, except for one thing. He wasn't fast enough to go in the race. We had to put our foot down now and go up to 35. Uh, I'm up speed. Never mind, he told his dog Horace. You can still go and watch the other cars. Horace woofed because he liked trips in Gumdrop. How are you going to feel when you realise you can't drive anymore? I'm really fed up, I'm also mad. Yes. And I'll need a lot of persuading <laughs> uh, to, to, to accept. 
I should be hugely isolated if I couldn't drive. They give me a, a dimension of mobility, which I haven't got on my own legs. To be allowed to get into a car and drive it gives me a varied life, which I appreciate hugely. I hope they kept our lunch for us. <laughs> sure. Older drivers, they can go very slow. They like to excessive brake, like as if a leaf went in front of them. I do 20 miles an hour in, in the hearse, and they're slower than me. Old folks might have a reputation for driving slowly, but not everyone hits the brakes when they become an OAP. This is a limited area, but they can't get you on the bend. They can't get you for speeding on the bend, can they? At 100, retired schoolteacher Mary Walker is in an elite class. She's one of just 59 women over a century old still on the road. It's exhilarating going fast. People that drive slowly, they frustrate you. How fast do I like to go? I don't think I ought to answer that. It was way back in 1935 that a 30 mile per hour speed limit was introduced in urban areas. By then, Mary had already talked her way out of one speeding ticket on the motorbike she'd bought by selling her pet pig. He's got a notebook out and he said, well, young man, what have you got to say for yourself? I said, I'm not a young man. Oh, oh, so he put a notebook away. <laughs> Since then, Mary's talked her way out of three more speeding tickets. Now, a hundred years and eight months old, she still drives nearly every day. I don't feel old. Why should I feel old? There's nothing you can do about reaching a hundred. You can't put the brakes on and say stop. That's it. You're there and you've got to put up with it. How would you get about if you didn't have a car? I don't want to get them out, I should have to walk, <laughs> and I would, can't walk very far. Right, I'm going to go for a spin. It's a big day for 91-year-old former Navy officer Harry Johnson. He's about to hit the road for the first time in 18 months, but he's not taking a car. This is my bike, uh, my pride and joy. Harry bought his vintage Honda 250cc Super Dream Deluxe four years ago, having not ridden a bike for more than 55 years. Well, yes, certainly I'm 91. I see no reason why I shouldn't ride a motorcycle, provided I feel confident and competent. But after a time in the repair shop, it's been over a year since he last took the bike out for a spin. Very much the first time in a while, and uh, yeah, a little bit of anxiety, but as soon as I get on it and start to drive, it'll be fine. And she's fit to go. I just hope I'm fit to go. Maybe 91, but Harry's determined to keep riding as long as he can. To dream, impossibly, to fight the unbeatable foe. What still appeals to me about motorcycling is that it's a wonderful sense of freedom, and it is almost like going back to the early days of motoring. King of the road. I think that on a, a quiet summer evening, it can be magic. Been absolutely splendid so far. I've thoroughly enjoyed what I've done. It was a very, very hairy start. I know that, I know that. But as soon as I got onto the straight road, there was no further problem. I, that was good. It was thoroughly good. Staying active has helped Harry get over the loss of his wife 16 years ago. There was a big readjustment after you lose somebody, yes, certainly. I, I wouldn't say that I still 
talk to my wife, but I used to for a little while. And, uh, if, for example, I saw something particularly lovely, then I would always say, I wish you could see this through my eyes. Um, but there's nothing you can do about it. To fight the unbeatable foe To reach the unreachable star I hope I'm young at heart. I always hope I'm young at heart. I think that's one of the things that makes life worthwhile. driving tests were introduced on the 1st of June 1935. Initially the pass rate was 63% compared with just 47% now. All my shares are up. Basil's big day has arrived. He's about to find out whether or not he should still be on the road, 60 years after he passed his driving test. If the driving instructor tell me I shouldn't be driving, well, that'll be the end of it be rather difficult to be able to go and see my wife in the residential home. His instructor for the day is Ian. At 93, Basil is by far his oldest ever client. We have to make sure that Basil is safe, not only for himself on the road, but for other road users. And on that basis, that's how I'll be assessing him. If you want to jump in the driving seat then. Right, OK. Do you want me to put your couches on the back seat for you? Or are you OK? Yes, you? OK. Fine, OK. So, I didn't check with you. Are you in a resort, OK? Oh, don't worry, I'll, I'll sort that out. Are you in a resort, OK? You turn again? No, just put your clutch down at the start. I'm sorry. I've, oh, I've, I've overridden that. Oh, see, was you with the clutch, yeah. I see, yes. OK. Um, are you in a resort, OK? Hmm? Are you in a resort, OK? I beg him. Are you, are you mirrors and door yes. mirrors all OK? Mm -hmm. So, do you still enjoy driving? Yes, oh, I enjoy driving, yes, yes. Good. So, you're making good use of those mirrors, Basil. Yes. <laughs> just, just gently, you're not used to that hand right there. No. Okay. My, my father taught me to drive the car, which was the biggest mistake we ever did, because he wouldn't pull me up on the mistakes I was doing with, with the car. <laughs> now, don't knock into neutral, leave your gears alone. No, don't break, don't break. No, no, no. We need oh. to go around this park car. Oh, you saw him, of course. Yeah, yeah. Forgetting you stop being yes. there. Ian wants to test Basil's full repertoire of skills. Next up, a reverse park. So just nice and slowly in, on full lock, full lock. Take your time, okay? Steady. Oops, sorry. Hold on. What you haven't realised is there's a curb round here. Yes, yes, so okay. So I go yes. straight and oh, then... Oh, sorry. Yeah. And then no full lock. Mm. How fast can you go down here? And 70. Okay, let's, uh, let's see what it will do then, shall we? Yes, yes, okay. I think your driving license should be taken away from you at the age of 70, I would say. I, would I wouldn't agree with that, just purely because I think that people should be tested on a regular basis, okay, so you can tell on the person's ability, not their age. I think that maybe from 70 to 75, perhaps everybody should have gone a refresher course, maybe. Some sort of assessment would be a good thing. I, I think, like all drivers, I want to know that everybody else on the road with me is able to do it. 93-year-old Basil Smith has been under the watchful eye of driving instructor Ian for the last 45 minutes. But how close do you think you should be to the car in front? I think I should be much closer. No, no. And I, and have I'm, you, I'm, I'm going to overtake him now. Have you read the highway code at all recently? Good. Oh, steady here because we can't see behind the truck. We're holding yes, back behind the truck. Watch him. Is it safe to go or not? Mm. Leave the signal alone. He's taking the second exit. Oh, you're No, you the second yes. exit. Yes, yes, sorry. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yes. Just gently. Okay. It's nice and relaxed, Basil. Nice and relaxed. Wait. So we've got a red light, Basil. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, no. you're okay. I'm flashing amber. Okay. And we'll just stop opposite your driveway or just anywhere here. No. Yes. Okay. Everybody's got to give up driving at a certain time in life.
That's an infallible uh, a fact. Ian now has to decide whether he thinks Basil is safe to continue driving. One or two problems, you know, watching the left-hand mirror a little bit then, but otherwise I think I, I did fairly reasonable, I think. Okay, Basil. Yes, okay. So how do you think it went? I think it went reasonably well. Reasonably well. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm pleased to tell you that I'm fairly happy for you to continue driving. Oh, thank I've you got very much. I've got one or two reservations. Yes. I, I do really want you to take some driving lessons from professional driving instructor. Yeah, yeah, right. And the main area is to consider are eliminate this unnecessary braking yeah. that, that, that happened a few times mm -hmm. and help you with your planning coming up to roundabouts. roundabouts yeah. And the other thing that came out in it, you, you, it appears to be a few years since you read the Highway Code. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd like you to accept this from me. Oh, all right, thank you very okay. much indeed. That's yeah. updated yeah. copy oh, of the Highway right, Code. It no, gives a lot of advice in there. That, yeah. yeah, and take care of yourself and yeah. good, good luck with your driving. Yeah, it's okay, okay. thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Basil lives to fight another day. Glennis will be thrilled. Brilliant. Older drivers might have a reputation for being dangerous on the road. But latest figures show drivers over 70 actually cause fewer accidents than drivers under 30. Are you too old to drive, Mary? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm 100 years young and a bit, and I'm going to still keep going. Oh, I'm in the better shop every day. Having been passed safe to drive by his son, Harry Carts is back in the car and off to the bookies. So I'm on my way. I must get out, otherwise, if I stop going out, that will be me finished. Good morning, the Harry. Usual, the usual bit. <laughs> I'm a bit of a loner, and I'm back here before half past nine, and then that's me finished for the day. Searson Thompson has no plans to stop driving, despite approaching his 103rd birthday. I'd like to be driving for many more years. I'm not frightened of, of uh, getting old at all. I just live from day to day. If I die, well, I die, that's the end of it. Ken and Edna are looking forward to celebrating Ken's 100th in a month's time. I'm always ready for a brandy. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Good hell. All the best, love. And as for Basil, his plans stretch well into the future. I haven't rung the red telephone toward the, the, the upper heavens yet, but I'm having a word with him now next week. He possibly let me know I'll be able to drive till I'm 100. And if my eyesight is good, my re reflection is good, I will drive to 100. And then I'll be one of the supermen of the United Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> The dramas continue for the Granthams in Downton Abbey over on ITV Encore next, while over on ITV4, Extreme Angler Jeremy Wade is on the lookout for river monsters. But coming up next here on ITV, we're back behind bars for more secrets from the clink.